Hello you guys and welcome to the Ant-Man channel on this Tuesday, the 18th of March 2014 and I'm glad you're with me. I'm doing this for my special friend on YouTube that if you asked him if I was his friend he'd be like no because he probably doesn't like me but you know Jesus called Judas Iscariot friend you know what I mean? Um, <clears throat> when he was pretty much betraying him but you know yeah I could call you friend because we're all human beings and even though we have different views that separate us from accepting each other because I don't it's not that I don't accept you but I get the feeling that I'm not accepted within the academic community but I just thought I'd do a special report for my friend who said Christianity is a lie and the whole Bruno thing was a fad well this is where that whole religion and science thing came from the like the um, philosophers and the science they didn't even call themselves scientists back then by the way that, that's that's just the arrogance of today to call yourself scientists and then put yourself uh, above everyone else but this is where that whole religion versus science thing came from this in this this individual his name is Giordano Bruno aka F uh, Filippo Bruno this is by the way on nndb.com and uh, I even pulled up I pulled up several uh, you know things about him I was looking at uh, galileo.rice.edu you know uh, but I'll just read this one I haven't really even read it yet but I'll read it um, but we'll see what happens here because I don't know what people are writing on the internet but when you as soon as you type G in Google you'll find out that Giordano Bruno is the number one googled person right now <laughs> he pretty much is really popular because of that show born 1548 birthplace Nola Italy died 17th of February 1600 on the dot location of death Rome Italy cause of death execution Remains cremated. Ash, his ashes got scattered. His gender was a male. His religion... Oh man, that is awesome. It says religion and then it says atheist. I'm not, I'm not kidding. Religion, atheist. For all you atheists out there that think you're not part of a worldview and a religion, then you might not consider it a religion, but in... Philosophically, it's a religion, you guys. Race of ethnicity, white. Occupation, scientist, philosopher, astronomer. Nationality, Italy. Executive summary, heretic cosmologist. <laughs> wow. Okay, that's quite a, quite a thing to be called, my friend. A, a heretic cosmetologist. Wow, that's, that's some pretty sophisticated political science for you right there. Um, you know, if you don't worship God, you worship something. It's common sense. God explains this to you in the Bible that, that, you know, like, you will worship something. The rich young ruler didn't know that he thought he was, you know, good and all that stuff. He, he thought he was a good person and all that. But he's like, well, I've kept the law and all this and that. And he didn't know Jesus didn't just mean that if you follow it to the letter. He meant if you even imagined these things, you did them in your heart. And that's punishable by hell. But... He realized pretty much when, you know, he said, well, then go sell all your possessions. That was like a, that was a mark of like, we'll see if you can even follow the first commandment, which is, well, go look at the Bible. It's Exodus 20, by the way. And yes, there's a Bible here in front of me. And because I'm a Christian, I like to do Bible study. And that's freaking hilarious to you, I bet, though. But, I, you know, I get, I feel like I get smarter every day. I feel like I become stronger every day. I feel like I become more loving every day even toward people that are unlovable by rationality or rational uh, thinking but anyways let me get into this italian philosopher of the renaissance was born near nola in the village of sicilla uh, little is known of his life he was christened filippo and took the name giordano only on entering a religious order in his 15th year he entered the order of the dominicans at naples and is said to have composed a treatise on the ark of noah why he submitted to a discipline palpably insuited to his fiery spirit we cannot tell in consequence of his views on transubstantiation and the immaculate conception he ha he was accused of impiety and after enduring 
persecution for some years, he fled from Rome about 1576 and wandered through various cities, reaching Geneva in 1579. The home of Calvinism was no resting place for him, and he traveled on through Leons. You know, back then, yeah, you know, um, things were different, and Christianity isn't Catholicism, you guys. We weren't the ones going around hitting people with our, with our rods and saying, Hey, you don't have enough faith. You know, that's not, that wasn't us. We were probably just quiet, and we probably got the same thing too from them. You know what I mean? It's, uh, and I'm sure we did. I know a lot of Christians were also, you know, a lot of people died for not having enough faith and stuff like that, according to the Pope or whatever. Uh, Toulouse and Montpellier arriving at Paris in 1581. So he went to three different places there, traveling through Lyons, Toulouse, and Montpellier. Uh, arriving at Paris in 1581. Everywhere he bent his energies to the exposition of the new thoughts which were beginning to affect a revolution in the thinking world. He had drunk deeply of the spirit of, re of the Renaissance. The determination to see for himself the noble universe unclouded by the mists of authoritative philosophy and church tradition. Well, I agree. Well, but, but the Renaissance did bring a lot of like... It, bring, it brought what the Industrial Revolution brought. It brought more faith in humanity. When we think that, you know, we're, you know what I mean, like we can pretty much give ourselves credit for all this, that's where you're going in the wrong direction. The Renaissance and the Industrial Revolution were great things, you guys. Those were great things that happened. But humanity started to get a little arrogant in, in those times because of, you know, the artisticness and, and then the, um, the, the quality of life going up big time. So, the discoveries of Nicholas Copernicus was eagerly accepted by him, and he used them as the lever by which to push aside the antiquated system that had come down from Aristotle, for whom indeed he had a perfect hatred. How can you hate Aristotle? Uh, well, it's this guy, I guess. Like Francis Bacon and Bernardino Telesio, he preferred the older Greek philosophers who had looked at nature for themselves. Oh, oh, oh. And whose speculations had more of reality in them. Oh, 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 sounds like a presupposition to me. He had read widely and deeply, and in his own writings, he could he uh, we come across many expressions familiar to us in earlier systems. Yet his philosophy is no ecclesiast, uh, ecclesiatism. Wow, I've never seen that word. He owed something to Lucretius, something to the Stoic nature, pantheism, something to Anaxagoras, uh, to Heraclitus to the uh, Figagorians and to the Neoplatonists, Platonists, Neoplatonists, sorry, who were partially known to him above all. He was a profound student of Nicholas of Cusa, who was indeed a speculative Copernicus. But his own system has a distinct unity and originality, and it, and it breathes throughout the fiery spirit of Bruno himself. You guys, evolution and all that stuff isn't new. It didn't come by Darwin. It has been believed by people for thousands of years. Thousands of years. Now, we're going back before Christ, you know, uh, more than like 500, 800 years, maybe more than a thousand years. You know what I mean? Like, man, people believed in evolution a long time ago and that there was no God and that the universe has always been and that it's always going to be and all that. It's, it's been believed before, you guys. Nothing new. Bruno had been well received at Toulouse, where he had a uh, lectured on astronomy. Even better fortune awaited him at Paris, especially at the hands of Henry III. He was offered a chair of philosophy, provided he would receive the mass. He at once refused, but was permitted to deliver lectures. Uh, these seem to have been altogether devoted expositions of a certain logical system which Bruno had taken up with great eagerness. The Ars Magna of Raymond Lull, with the exception of a satiric comedy, uh, Il Candelajo, all the works of this period are devoted to this logic, de umbrus idilarum ars memoria uh, de campandusia architectura et complemento artis luli and cantus curcaeus. I hope I said all those right. To many it has seemed a curious freak of Bruno's uh, that he should be so, or that he should have so eagerly adopted a view of thought like of luli. But in reality, it is in strict accordance with the principles of his philosophy, like the Arabian lo uh, logic logicians and some of the sc scholastics, who held that ideas existed in a threefold form, ante res, in rebus, and post res. He laid down the principles at the 
uh, the archetypal ideas existed metaphysically in the ultimate unity of intelligence physically in the world of things and logically in science symbols of notions or notions excuse me symbols or notions these notions were shadows of the ideas and the Ars Magna furnished him with a general scheme according to which their relations and correspondences should be exhibited it supplies it supplied not only a memoria technica but an organum or method by which the genesis of all ideas from unity might be repre represented intelligibly and easily. It provided also a substitute for either the Aristotelian or the Ramist logic, which was an additional element in its favor. Well, there's a lot of stuff here written about him. If you guys want to read about him, uh, Bruno's writings have been much neglected when Frederick Hendrick uh, Heinrich Jacobi brought them into notice in his brief Uber die Larry uh, Spinoza's, which then may have held that Descartes, Spinoza, and Leibniz were indebted to him for their main principles. So far as Descartes is concerned, it is highly improbable that he had been or had seen any of Bruno's works. Schelling, however, called one of his works after him Bruno. Well, you know, like I just read that last sentence there, but you know, if you want to just get the gist of what happened. He was called a heretic by the Catholic Church because he didn't believe in the <clears throat> uniformitarian, uh, uniformitarian idea of the time. Why is this important? Well, because, look, I know that people that were just rebellious by design. We are naturally rebellious. If, some, if there's a system, if there's something about us that wants to be disobedient and we want to go against our parents, our, our government, or whatever, you know? Like, we just want to have an idea to think that it's all bull and it's all corrupt and you want to go against it. But the fact of the matter is, is that during the Reformation time, a lot of important stuff happened. The Bible got rediscovered. There was a, the a theological reformation by a lot of people. And these things were counter-reformed as well. There were people that were trying to keep the public stupid to the fact that you're free. They don't want you to be free because the Bible makes you free. If you don't read it, then you're going to be... You're going to be a slave to all of this stuff, all of this, all of this religion and all of this like philosophy that is um, confusing, in my opinion, because I've, I've heard them all. I've heard all of, you know, Socrates and all these people that, that other ideas and they're good. They're, it's good to study these things, but also know that just because this guy came around when the church was all big and that's how everything ran, that that's the guy that freed your mind. It's not, you guys. The, the world's always been like that. The world's always had some type of weird religious rite, you know, it was happening in Jesus' time, and as a matter of fact, they're the ones that killed him. So, Bruno is almost like, exactly like Jesus, but he didn't die for the same reason. He died because he had radical ideas at his time that I don't believe are right. He said that there was a, infinity galaxies with infinity life out there, and he said a lot of things that you can't observe, and you can't, how are you going to say stuff like that, and, and, and be taken seriously? And he denied basic biblical principles and basic bi biblical things that we all know are real like if you believe in the god of this bible he is three people in one he's a trinity so you can't like just deny that and then say you're christian because then you're not because you know what i mean it's there's a fine line but you guys study this stuff for yourself it's not just as simple as you think it is because um you know I know that, you know, religion has given Christianity a bad name and you guys all think like it's it's your guys' fault for this and that and it's always been you guys and it's not it's not true. Why don't you dig a little deeper and figure this stuff out, man? The Renaissance and the Industrial Revolution brought certain elements into the world that did kind of mess it up, man, for everybody. And there were big changes that went in the world at those times. It's not gonna get any better by the way, and the programming is only gonna get thicker, so for you guys that hear me, man, God bless you. But for you guys out there that are skeptic or that are totally brain and mind controlled to think that I'm the one trying to control your mind, you need to start asking questions and you need to start digging deeper because it's not as simple as just turning on History Channel and going, oh, I know it all now. All right, you guys. All right. God bless you and have a good day.